हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी शैल हैव डिस्कशन ऑन लेसर वी शैल डिस्कस वॉट इज लेसर एंड वॉट इज द प्रिंसिपल यूज इन लेसर एज यूजल फर्स्ट वी डिफाइन लर्निंग आउटकम्स आफ्टर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो स्टूडेंट्स वील बी एबल टू स्टेट पॉइंट्स ऑफ डिफरसेस बिट्वीन ट्रेडिशनल सोर्स एंड लेसर define and explain stimulated emission now in the beginning i would like to ask you one question what difference do you find in traditional source like incandescent lamp flash tube and laser source you can pause the video video think over this question and give the answer i hope you have answered the question now i will give you on what points we find the difference between traditional source and laser first we have learned to see the difference i will give you two pictures see this is the traditional source i will show you here see this is the bulb or traditional source this is the bulb or traditional source and this is laser now you can easily see here the waves emitted by this bulb they are not of the same wavelength and therefore we call it polychromatic and here you can see that in laser here you can see all the waves have the same wavelength and therefore we call it monochromatic now next point of difference is directionality now you see here the waves are emitted in all possible directions and here you see the waves are all in only one direction and so we say that this is the divergent and while laser is highly directional now coherence now you can see here the emission in case of traditional in case of bulb emission you see here it is random emission here it is mean position here it is crest here it is trough so there is a random there is no any correlation hmm? so we call it as a incoherent while the laser you can see all the crest are at the one place troughs are also at the one place so we call it as a coherent source okay and next is the polarization it is unpolarized traditional is unpolarized while laser is polarized beam of light so these are the points of differences between traditional source and laser now again this is the time for reflection spot which source would you choose in your reading room think over it you may pause the video yes correct answer huh? can you use laser or traditional source hmm? of course the answer correct answer is traditional source we cannot use laser in our reading room or study room because laser is highly directional or pointed all the intensity is converged into a small point there is no uniform illumination but if we use traditional source there is uniform distribution of intensity and this is what we require in our study room or in our day to day life we can say we use traditional source but for particular applications we require highly directional beam of light and there we use laser so what is laser it is acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation okay light amplification cl 
a light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation l a s e r okay so this is the laser acronym for laser now what is the mechanism of light emission in laser we have to study here three mechanisms absorption spontaneous emission and stimulated emission so first we shall discuss absorption now consider a very simple case of two energy levels e1 and e2 now just like electrons have the energy levels in the atom the in the material atom as a whole also has the energy and we can consider as the atomic energy levels so these are the two energy levels e1 and e2 hmm? now naturally the atom will stay in e1 because it is lower energy state and it is the stable energy state now atom will stay in e1 for infinite time so we call it as a ground state it is a stable whose lifetime is infinite infinite means what unless and until we provide energy to the atom atom will not go to e2 now if we want to take the atom to e2 or we excite the atom then what we do we provide energy see this is the energy this is the photon hmm? this is the photon of energy e2 minus e1 is incident on the atom now atom absorbs that energy and it jumps to energy e2 now see here this is the photon incident atom absorbs that energy and goes to e2 so this phenomenon is absorption now we have seen atom is in e2 it is the excited state it is unstable so what is the lifetime atom cannot stay here for longer time so lifetime is 10 raised to minus 8 second so after atom will stay here for 10 raised to minus 8 second and after 10 raised to minus 8 second it will spontaneously come down to e1 with emission of same energy see here atom comes down and photon is emitted of the same energy e2 minus e1 so this we call spontaneous emission now one more mechanism is there that is stimulated now again we consider the excited atom atom is in e2 now we have seen it is excited state lifetime is 10 to the minus 8 second and after 10 to the minus 8 second there is stimulus there is emission now consider another photon of same energy this is the photon of same energy e2 minus e1 now it is incident on the system now atom is already in the excited state e2 state and therefore absorption is not possible so what happens here this atom it triggers sorry this photon it triggers this atom to come down before 10 raised to minus 8 second remember just it stimulates this photon stimulates this atom to come down i will show you this is the photon incident now atom comes down and now we get two photons one that is the incident photon and another due to transition of atom so this we call as a stimulated emission it is emission of photon by excited atom when it is triggered by another photon of matching energy now this phenomenon was predicted by scientist einstein in 1970 now we have seen that both these photons have the energy e2 minus e1 both these photons 
have the energy e2 minus e1 we have seen in the previous slide it is e2 minus e1 they have the same energy it means they have same wavelength and same frequency and therefore we call it as monochromatic now both these photons are in the same phase we have seen what is the same phase crest and crest trough trough overlap hmm? they have the same phase it means it is coherent it is the polarized beam all the waves are in the same plane of polarization and both these photons are emitted exactly in the same direction and therefore it is highly directional okay so these are the properties of laser and this is the concept of stimulated emission okay now stimulated emission we have discussed now it is the basis for laser action because laser we have seen light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation now this is cumulative process i will show you one diagram see here we have one photon in the beginning we have one photon okay now this photon it interacts with two x one excited atom gives stimulated emission and we get two photons these two photons interact with two excited atoms and we get now four photons then 8 16 32 and so on so this one started this process continues and rate of emission also increases and this we call as amplification amplification means increase so there is amplification okay what is amplified light is amplified and how is it amplified by stimulated emission and that is the laser light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation that is the laser now we have seen the three mechanisms and we require stimulated emission for lasing action or we can say stimulated emission is the principle used but it is very sluggish or it is very rare it is because <laughs> it is very rare because here spontaneous emission happens in 10 days to minus 8 second now see to say the word laser to utter this word laser i require 1 second and we are talking about 10 days to minus 8 it is very very small period we cannot imagine that and spontaneous emission happens in 10 days to minus 8 second and for stimulated emission we require the time less than 10 days to minus it and therefore it is very difficult phenomenon to happen but still we make it possible and how do we make it possible that we shall discuss in the next video okay thank you